Amen. Okay, uh, Susan Dinner, come. We always look forward to our mission update. She does such a great job, doesn't she? So we're going to ask her to come and uh, give us that report. Well, good evening. It's good to see you all, and I'm going to fly through. This is truly going to be a Missionary Digest version because I'm going to fly through several. And um, the Rogers family, missionaries for 25 years to Chile. Y'all know them, Philip and Wendy Rogers. They were here, their son Bryson. Um, he's actually home in college now. Uh, if you follow their report, if you're friends with them on Facebook, um, when they went to Chile, they had every intention of dying there, you know, as long as the Lord gave them breath. But the Lord has moved, and I'm not going to take time to get into all of that. You can read the letter later, but um, he has actually been called to pastor their home church. Their long-term pastor, Brother Gandhi, had, has moved, God moved him to another church after almost 30 years. And so due to several different circumstances, God has just opened doors and closed doors and directed them. And so they are now taking the leadership of um, Liberty Baptist Church in Mississippi. So they're going to do a wonderful job. It's always sad to me as an MK to see a missionary come off the field. On the other hand, we now have another pastor who is very mission-hearted and knows knows how to be a blessing to them. So y'all remember them. It's still a big transition. A lot of their heart is in Chile. So pray for them. And then the next missionary, my, my family that I love, is I'm just updating because I we talked about them last month. I promise I'm not going to do it every month. But <laughs> I wanted to tell you because I mentioned in prayer request time last Wednesday that um, they were going to be at the Brazilian consulate in Houston this week, and they had three appointments, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And um, they called me Monday morning and said, guess what? All five visas approved. We're out of here. Amen. So that was very exciting. Yeah, praising the Lord for that. And Brother Chris um, wanted to thank the church for praying. And my sister, y'all y'all know I read about her, Bailiwick. And she said, pray for me to increase in PC, please. You knew it was coming. If you don't remember, you're going to have to go back to last month. Truth is, I'm too busy minding my bailiwick to write about it, but we are thankful for your faithful prayers and support. That's all from the little trailer in the big parking lot. Um, then uh, the next missionary is the Pittman family. I also talked about them last month, and the only thing I'm going to say about them, they're wonderful missionaries in Chile, is they had their baby, their surprise baby. On Monday, February the 19th, Jennifer delivered our new baby boy, Titus William Pittman, eight pounds even and 19.6 inches long, born at 4.44 p.m. Mom and baby are fine. We brought him home, and the other boys are very excited to have a little brother in the house. Then Carl and Masayo Anderson. These are our missionaries in Sweden. He's from Sweden, married a Japanese lady. Y'all know the story. They were in Okinawa for many years. This is their youngest um, and but they are in Sweden now for the last couple of years, two and a half years. He says 2017 has truly been a year of battles with three things, political correctness, liberalism, and the Swedish IRS. I'm going to touch on them for you. Just to give you an example, there are people in Sweden who think it's politically incorrect to raise the Swedish flag because it might offend some of the immigrants who are coming into their country. He said, that's what, I, that's what we deal with, you know. And that is sounding a little scary to me, isn't it? But so that's something that they're dealing with. He said, as, on the liberal side, as a Bible-believing Baptist, it is shocking to listen to some people here in Sweden that claim to be Christian and in the same breath talk about things that, for me, are so embarrassing to even think about and I would never dare mention in public. This is what we deal with. As far as the tax department, when he, they went over there, he went to them in person and explain, I'm a missionary, I'm supported, etc. I get, how do I handle taxes? They told him what to do, and they told him that he needed to pay a thousand dollars a month in taxes. So that's what he's been doing faithfully all this time. And when he filed his taxes last year, he got a call and said, oh, we made a mistake. You owe another five thousand dollars on top of what you've paid. And he said, no, wait. You know, he went back to his documentation. They said, no, doesn't matter. Sorry, you, you owe it. So, like most missionaries, didn't have a ton of money. So, he, you know, they went home. But unbeknownst to all this that was going on, uh, a church in California had already sent them a $5,000 love offering. 
just in time. Isn't that awesome? He was praising the Lord for that. And he said, he shared something very interesting to me. He says, I want to give you a short history of the Baptist in Sweden. The first church was established in 1846 in southern Sweden with six members. It grew rapidly, and in the early 1900, there were about Baptist churches all over Sweden. He says, however, in the early 1900s, the Pentecostal movement started to influence the people and took over more and more. Now they are the biggest so-called evangelical church in Sweden. And he said, in the two and a half years since we've been here, I've not find, found one single other church in Sweden of independent Baptist doctrine. So we have a wide open field. And then he requests prayer um, that Masayo, his wife, you know, had to immigrate. And so she had gone back to Okinawa, spent time with their kids, spent time with her family. And he says, I'm very happy to report to you that Masayo is back home with me in Sweden and received her permanent residence. To God be the glory. I also want to thank the Lord for some good health. Um, I don't know if you read this letter. I'm not 100% sure if I shared it with you. In addition to his mission work, he went to work and took a part-time job, a very physical job, to help pay his kids' school back in Okinawa. They were, they're finishing college. And he says, I was able to work hard the last six months and make extra money to help our children finish school in Okinawa. It was a great opportunity to witness and share the gospel with so many people. And as of January, I only need to work one day a week now, except when they call me to shovel snow. Then I, then I work whenever they need me. To God be the glory with love, Brother Carl and Masayo. And he always finishes every letter with this, because Christ loved us first. Then the next missionary is the Downs family. Missionaries in Ethiopia. I'm going to read you just a couple of excerpts from their letter. Um, this is not a super picture. We scanned it in from the from their newsletter. Couldn't find anything online, um, but it gives you an idea. Um, we never know what to expect when giving the gospel out. Responses can be harsh at times. Often my wife and children are the recipients of overt and subtle retaliation for various cultural and spiritual reasons. But when we consider what other witnesses of the gospel go through around the world, we can say we are blessed. Please pray for Carletta, that's his wife's tachycardia. She's doing pretty well, but she still has an issue. Abigail, their daughter, her allergies are a little bit better with just minor flare-ups. Our bouncy, bubbly little girl is experiencing some eczema on her legs, which can be itchy and painful. Would appreciate your prayers for that. James is our little soccer player, and he is doing great, but we do keep an eye on what he eats. If you remember their previous letters, he's had a lot of digestive issues. My health, thank be to God, is very good. I have more strength and energy, and I recoup more quickly. God's answers to our prayers are evident. We are printing many uh, tracks. They're on the way to the printing press right now. Pray for us as we witness. And he, he mentions that, had mentioned this before. I admire my wife's boldness when she passes out tracks at the marketplace. Um, it can make for an unpleasant experience when confronted by, by some of the workers. But she uses wisdom and is able to get in some really good witnesses on a personal basis. He was witnessing to a man, Dr. Bakella, who has a Ph.D. in engineering. He had had some previous business dealings with him, and this man had been pretty dishonest. And um, he's 70 years old, and he mentioned to me, to Brother Downs, that he was trying to amend his ways and get closer to God as he's getting older through his Orthodox religion. I told him of our hopelessness in our own righteousness and how we must throw ourselves on the mercies of God through faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. This is the only way. He said in the middle of that conversation, he stopped and stared at me. We must talk about this some more. I hope we can be friends after this. So pray for Dr. Bakella and pray for this family as they continue to minister. The last one I'm going to share with you is the Shepherds. They, they are missionaries in the Dominican Republic, and they recently moved from one side of the island to the other. You, you know that if you're following the letters. These, this is their family. The two girls are actually home in college now, so pray for them, and the two boys are, are with them. And they are starting a new Bible study on the east side of the city in an area that they call Honduras. One of the brethren teaches and preaches in Spanish, and one of the brethren interprets in Creole for the many Haitians who are present. They're meeting under a lean-to right now. That's all they've got, but they are praying for um, opportunity for a better building. But it is growing. Um, their church has done really well. 
the new church, Valley View Baptist Church, that they launched in September with a local pastor there as well. Um, and he just, it, it's a good letter. I'm going to shorten this here. In, but they are doing super well. Request your prayer request for immigration paperwork, which they are working on to improve their status in the country. And then this was his actual New Year's letter. So I'm going to, even though we're past the New Year's, y'all know I get the letters late because of mail and all those things. But I, um, he said something that I'm just going to quote this paragraph from him, the way he was looking at the new year, and it was really good, and I thought it would bless you as it blessed me. A new year is upon us. Many yesterdays will be forgotten. Many opportunities will be presented. Failures will be experienced. Even so, the most important thing in the year ahead will be how we conduct our service and our business for the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Resolutions will not matter. Wishes and desires will alter nothing. But how we serve the Lord will alter the course of life. Each of us are concerned by the rapid change and deterioration of our society. But are we disturbed enough to arrange our schedule so that faithfulness to the Lord's house comes first? God bless.